Welcome to the United States of Small Business, a podcast where the essence of American entrepreneurship is celebrated in every episode. With host John Quick at the helm, join us as we embark on a journey through the heart of the nation, uncovering the inspiring stories of small business owners from coast to coast. Experience the vibrant energy of bustling cities and the serene beauty of small towns, all while discovering how individuals are turning their entrepreneurial dreams into reality, even against the greatest odds. Each episode brings you face to face with the dreamers, creators, and doers who form the economic backbone of our country, all sharing their spirit of innovation and resilience. Whether you are in the early stages of sowing the seeds for your own business, scaling new heights in your current venture, or simply captivated by tales of grit and triumph, you are in the right place. Tune in on platforms like Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and beyond. For deeper insights and to connect with the heart and soul of America's main streets, visit UnitedStatesOfSmallBusiness.com. Subscribe to United States of Small Business with host John Quick now and be inspired by the powerful stories of entrepreneurship, community, and the unwavering pursuit of the American dream. Begin your journey of inspiration with us today. Welcome entrepreneurs and business enthusiasts to the United States of Small Business podcast, where we dive deep into stories, challenges, and triumphs of small businesses across the nation. I'm your host, John Quick, and in each episode, we uncover the heart and soul behind America's vibrant small business landscape. Today, we are embarking on a journey into the world of re resilience, determination, and innovation. But before we delve into our future small businesses, let me introduce you to the remarkable individual who embodies these qualities in every aspect of life life. Meet Christian Espinoza. Christian isn't just an entrepreneur. He's a force of nature, a beacon of inspiration for inspiring business owners everywhere. With a background steeped in technology and cybersecurity, Christian's journey is nothing short of awe-inspiring. From a humble beginnings to scaling heights of success, Christian's story is a testament to the power of perseverance and the unwavering belief in one's vision. But what truly sets Christian apart is not just his professional accolades, but his commitment to giving back, to empowering others on their entrepreneur path. As we explore the in intricacies of small businesses in the United States, Christian's insights will serve as a guiding beacon, illuminating the way forward for all of us. So fasten your seatbelts and get ready to be inspired as we unravel Christian's story. This will be fun. So without further ado, Christian, Welcome to the United States of Small Business pod Podcast. I'm so glad to have you with us. Hey, John. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Well, I'm, I'm super excited you're on. Um, you know, I, I was on one of your profiles and I recently saw that you had a picture, not recently, but I recently, I recently saw, but it was a picture maybe 20, 30 years ago, that you had a picture with a past president. Tell me the story behind that. <laughs> I did have a picture of the past president. I grew up uh, in Arkansas. I moved from California to Arkansas when I was 12. So it's quite the culture shock. I moved from a Riverside, California, which is like a suburb of LA to a town of 800 people in Arkansas. And I was one of the top students in Arkansas. So I got to go meet the governor uh, at that time, which was Bill Clinton. And I uh, went to the governor's mansion with my grandparents. So that that must be one of the pictures. Another one, I attended this gifted and talented program in Arkansas uh, the, called the Fulbright School of Public Affairs. This was when I was a junior, and Bill Clinton, the governor at the time, came and spoke at our um, uh, gathering there. So and that's another time I, I took had a picture with him. Yeah, nice. Well, that's awesome. Well, you've you know uh, you've had a wide variety of amazing experiences uh, from Air Force Academy to being an entrepreneur to being an author. Talk to me about what it was like to get into the Air Force Academy, because that's one of the hardest schools to get into in the whole U.S. I bet it was quite the experience. How was your experience there? Well, I, I grew up extremely poor and in a chaotic environment. So the, the way out of my environment was uh, a scholarship or a military academy. So I applied to all the academies. I was pretty um, smart academically, and I, I was played football. So I was all district football and I kind of met all the criteria and I got accepted to them all. And I chose the Air Force Academy because the brochure looked cooler. <laughs> it was <laughs> nice. in Colorado and the pictures looked cool and they, I, they had better marketing, I guess. Uh, and I wanted to fly jets. Uh, I saw the movie Top Gun 
and wanted to fly jets. I know that's Navy, but I thought it would be better to, you know, live, live in a house than on a ship. So that's why I joined the Air Force and went to the Air Force Academy. The experience was, um, it was very challenging. <clears throat> I thought it was pretty smart in Arkansas. To, like, I was number two in my class. And then uh, I wasn't that smart when I got to the Air Force Academy. I was surrounded by people <laughs> that had taken like calculus four. And I think I took calculus one in high school. It's all they offered in, in my school. So it was um it was very challenging for me. So so what got you into cybersecurity? Because that that's kind of where you've um spent a, a big chunk of your time in. What what was what was one of your first jobs that kind of tugged at your curiosity strings to think, man, I think I could make a career out of cybersecurity. Yeah, that was my fallback plan, if I'm being transparent. I, I wanted to fly jets. And then when uh, a couple years before I graduated college at the Air Force Academy, they cut all the pilot slots. So they weren't giving people a pilot slot. It used to be, if you went to the Air Force Academy, you're guaranteed a pilot slot, but they cut the slots for two classes in front of me and I would have had to wait quite a while. So my backup plan was communications in the military. And I ended up doing information assurance and protecting classified networks. So that kind of started me on my cybersecurity career. And then I separated from active duty after six years because I wanted to fly, number one. And number two, I uh, didn't like people telling me what to do all the time. <laughs> <laughs> wanted to switch it up a little bit. Yeah. So at one yeah. point, you also kind of got a bug for doing these extreme races. Um, you, you know, I read on, on your website, you've done dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of these extreme races. Talk to me about mm -hmm. what that, uh, what about extreme races was enticing to you to go out and conquer the world in this realm? Yeah, that all started with a friend of mine who was super competitive. We were traveling Europe and it, we, we'd have contests on everything, like a hold your breath contest. And if somebody exhaled during the contest, he would disqualify them because he's like, what part of the hold your breath did you not understand? So he, he, um, was a big smack talker and he challenged me to a triathlon and I didn't even know what a triathlon was. I couldn't swim or anything. So I did this <laughs> triathlon at this uh, air force base. It was a, a short distance, Olympic distance as they call it. And after that, I just started doing more of them and upping the ante and doing you know, greater distances. And I felt that that gave me a purpose for my training because before I would just go to the gym and kind of lift weights or get on a treadmill. But now I had a reason to train and there are three different things like, uh, the swimming, the biking, the running to get better at. So it's always something to improve. And then once I started kind of mastering, you know, finishing Ironman triathlon, I thought, what's next? And I started doing ultra marathons and then mountaineering, which is way harder than triathlon. And just, um, yeah, just kind of living on the edge a little bit there. I, I'm, a, I'm, I think by nature, I'm a risk taker. And if there's a waiver involved where you could lose an arm or possibly die, I, I, I'm like attracted <laughs> to that sort of activity. Maybe, that, maybe that's why I like entrepreneurship as well. <laughs> and I, I read you, you had a, uh, you got to train with somebody pretty famous. Bear Grylls is pretty awesome. Tell me about that experience. Yeah, I was flying uh, to Doha um, in Qatar from, uh, I forgot where I was flying from, but in the in-flight magazine, there was uh, this article about the Bear Grylls Survival Academy. And for some reason, I got super excited about it. And as soon as I landed and got checked in the hotel, I I went to the website and I applied to for the uh, Survival Academy. I ended up going to that as a student in Scotland. And then I went back and became an instructor later on. So uh, that was you know five days of, of survival and learning how to survive. And I went through that in the military and um, survival, evasion, resistance, and escape. So it was a little bit similar to that, but... Um, I thought for a while I might become an adventure instructor nice. and that would have been my path. I'm just like, I like to learn new things and like to put myself out there. So do you have a favorite race that you've done and how many of you completed uh, over the course of your lifetime? I've completed 24 full distance Ironmans, uh, probably like over a hundred, you know, various, dis various distances. My favorite is probably Kona, the world championship. I did that in 2015. That was a 10 year journey to get there. I remember wow. standing on the finish line in 2005 is the very first time I went to Hawaii. And um, my girlfriend at the time took a picture of me under the finish line. And I told myself someday I'd do that race. And 10 years later, I actually crossed the finish line as a participant. So that was cool. Nice. I bet that felt really good. It did. Yeah. 
So you awesome. were you were climbing climbing the cybersecurity corporate ladder, and then you got a bug in your in your ear to start your own firm. Uh, take me back to that moment where you're you know sitting down thinking I could probably just do this myself. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, not a straight linear journey. I had done a part time um, consulting company with a friend of mine for a while uh, when we were doing consulting for the government. But then I was a VP of a company doing a cybersecurity. I, I checked all the boxes and I was making good money, had a title, a you know, nice car and all that stuff. And then I got into a run-in with the CEO that became pretty persistent. So I decided to quit that job without having another job lined up. And that is very um, new to me. Back then, I, I'd never done something like that. And that forced me to you know, reassess my work situation. And I decided to do freelance work and leverage my contacts. And then after about five years of freelance work, I got bored with it. And I thought, um, what else can I do? And I thought a better way to grow that'll force me to grow and to contribute to the economy and become a better leader is to start my own business. And that's when I started my first business, uh, which I sold in 2020. Nice. And then did you start another one after that? Yes, I started Blue Goat Cyber, which is what I am running right now and working to scale as quickly and efficiently as possible. I'm trying to learn from all the dumb tax, as they say, <laughs> that I paid with my first business and make this one much more successful. Awesome. So tell folks what Blue Goat Cyber does. You know, I think when a lot of people think cybersecurity, they think maybe there's, you know, spam in their email or you know, the malware software that they run in yeah. the background to keep it outside, you know, spam off their computer, but it's, it's probably way more in depth than that. So talk to me about what your business does and what, what kind of problems you solve for folks. We focus on medical device cybersecurity. Uh, that's our niche. That's our, our blue ocean, as they say. Uh, a lot of other people focus on other stuff, but that's the area we're focused on. On average, there's 14 devices connected to a hospital bed. And a lot of those devices are vulnerable. So we help manufacturers secure those devices and get them approved by the FDA because they have to go through rigorous cybersecurity testing and risk analysis and all that to get approved. And that's that's what we do. Nice. You're out there saving lives, basically. I mean, that's a lot, a lot of these, <laughs> if, they, if those devices get hacked or shut down or whatever, you know, people have probably risk dying. So it's a, probably a very real thing and your efforts probably keep a lot of people safe is my guess. Yeah. It's something I, I am very behind. Uh, it's much more tangible. Like you said, somebody can die if there's an implantable, like a pacemaker and somebody hacks into it and shocks you incessantly. And it's something I uh, am a big believer in it because there's a lot of advances in healthcare and I would hate for them to be rolled back because of vulnerable medical devices. Yeah. So somewhere along the line, you also wrote a book. Um, <laughs> you know, if if being the vice president of a cybersecurity and then starting your own cybersecurity, doing a hundred races, all that wasn't <laughs> enough. You you went and wrote a book, which I think is awesome. Tell me about what the what what is the book title, and tell me the premise. Tell the folks that are listening the premise of the book. Yeah, I've written a couple books. I'm working on my third. The first book uh, I think you're referring to is called "The Smartest Person in the Room." Uh, and that book is about my journey with my first cybersecurity company. 99% of my problems were because my staff lacked emotional intelligence. It wasn't because they lacked technical skills. So that book is what I did in my company to bring some emotional intelligence to my staff. And, and the challenge in cybersecurity and other high-tech industries is everybody wants to be significant. We all want to be significant. And the way we become significant in a high tech industry is by being, you know, quote, smarter than other people. And when that's your ego and that's your, you know, what you're trying to do, you're always looking for ways to prove that you're smarter than someone or prove that someone doesn't know as much as you. And that doesn't help with relationships with your team. And it doesn't help with building uh, good relationships with clients either. And that's what I addressed in the, in the book. Nice. It's kind of therapeutical probably to write it, I guess. My guess would be. Yeah, I realized that throughout my own journey, I was one of the people that had postured and and tried to be smarter than other people as well. So it it took it was a lot of reflection, and I realized that I had contributed to this you know challenge in the industry as well. 
Um, I think a book should be transformational for the author as well as anyone that reads it. And it was definitely transformational for me. So what, what's your latest book? You said you've written three now. Uh, I've written two. I'm, I'm work, working on the third. Working on the your third, book, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the latest book is called The In-Between Life in the Micro. It's about, it's more of a, a focused memoir of, of about where I've got things right and where I've got them wrong in terms of being hyper-focused on a macro goal and missing things right in front of me, uh, which I call, you know, between where we are and where we're trying to go is the in-between and the, the moments right in front of us are those micro moments. We sometimes don't realize the value in those. So it's about that and, and, you know, what relationships I've screwed up because I've ignored the stuff right in front of me because I was so focused on something ahead of me and where I've got things right as well. It's a little bit of both, probably more of where I've screwed things up. But like I said, it's, uh, it was transformational to write the book uh, and hopefully anyone that reads it uh, gets value out of it as well. Nice. So what kind of advice would you give for folks? You know, there's going to be people listening in on this thinking like, oh my gosh, this guy's accomplished so much. You know, they're just, they're struggling to, you know, sell something on eBay or something, you know, and, and so I think, you know, somebody like yourself, that's been fairly successful, um, you know, you probably have a little bit of knowledge. And so what's kind of some advice you give to folks that are maybe just starting out in the entrepreneurial world, or they want to start out, or they've experienced, you know, five or six speed bumps and want to give up, um, you kept going. So what would you tell folks that are maybe in your shoes, but 15 years ago? Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, for me, I used to say yes to a lot of things, uh, which is why I've done so many things. But I realized that trying to do a lot of things at once actually slowed me down. So now I'm more in the position of saying no to almost everything. I'm not training for an Ironman right now. I'm working on growing the business. So one of the things I would say is to be hyper-focused on on the business and, and try not to do too many things. Go all in, really. And there's going to be ups and downs, and that's just part of it. The other part is really figuring out your messaging and who your audience is. Uh, without that, uh, it, it doesn't matter how good of a product you have or how good of a service you offer if you can't speak or market in terms of what the other person that you're selling to about solving their pain points in a way that resonates with them. And then I guess the third, there's a lot of things we could talk about. The third thing is really understanding the market um, and go out, going after like a blue ocean strategy. Like that's why I'm focused on medical device cybersecurity. There's not a lot of people that can do it. But if I were doing cybersecurity for, you know, web applications or something like that, uh, or spam, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of companies that do that. That's a red ocean strategy. And that's uh, an easier way for your offering to be commoditized. So I think it's important to have a focus on something that is unique in a blue ocean strategy. Nice. So who's somebody that you've looked up to over the years? I'm sure you've had mentors and folks that have, you know, spoken into your life, but who's kind of been a hero in your life? There's been a lot. I have followed Tony Robbins for a long time. I've been to a number of his events. Uh, recently, I have been listening to a lot of Alex Hermosi's um, books. I've read his, his books and listened to his YouTube videos. Um, so those are two of the a couple of big ones, those two. Nice. Well, how can folks, um, you know, find out more about what you do? Do you help other people in the entrepreneur space right now? You know, a lot of folks also help, you know, potential entrepreneurs that want to scale their businesses. That's something that you do as well. Yeah. I, I always, I'm open to conversations with fellow entrepreneurs and I, I believe that small businesses and entrepreneurship is vital to our economy. So I, I certainly help where I can. Uh, I'm a part of a number of mastermind groups or entrepreneur groups where I help other people. And, you know, we all help each other, really. I don't know, have it all figured out. People can um, contact me on my website, uh, christianespinoza.com, or my company is bluegoatcyber.com. So the color blue and goat and cyber.com. Nice. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So 20 minutes has gone by literally in a flash. We're 20 minutes later. Do you have any last minute thoughts uh, before we head out here? The floor is yours. I think the last bit of thoughts are if you're thinking about doing a business, um, do it sooner than later. Because I, I wanted to do one a long time ago, and I, I decided to play it safe and and all the things that society tells us to do. Um, all my friends were, were telling me, you're crazy to start a business. You've got this high-paying job, and it's easy, blah, blah, blah. And I listened to them for too long, and that put me further 
I mean, I could be further ahead if I had started earlier. Yeah. Well, Christian, I really appreciate you joining us. Folks listening in, if you just caught the tail end here, go back to the whole thing and listen. And Christian has just got a, he's had a phenomenal life experience from going to the Air Force Academy to rising in the ranks of cybersecurity world to starting his own cybersecurity firm, writing a couple books, doing these uh, amazing races and training with folks like Bear Grylls. So um, I want to encourage folks to go listen to it. I'll put the links to all Christian stuff in the podcast description. And uh, I, I want to thank you for coming on the United States of Small Business uh, podcast, Christian. You're welcome back anytime. And I hope everybody has a phenomenal weekend. And tune in next time to the United States of Small Business podcast. Have a good day.